Good morning, Digit fam. Adam Dowd here, ready to take you on your daily guided tour through the world of tech. Remember to keep your hands to yourself and keep up with the rest of the group. And flash photography is okay, but not if you're using a tablet. Every time you take a photo with a tablet, an angel dies. It is May 15th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. As expected, OnePlus dominates the headlines this morning with another tempting offer from the folks who use math for their name, and that, by the way, gives them instant credibility for me. OnePlus introduced the OnePlus 7 Pro, which is a real screamer in terms of performance. Let's take a look. You've got all the basics here. <laughs> basics. <laughs> you have all the top tier specs you'd be looking for. A 6.67 inch QHD plus AMOLED display, Snapdragon 855 processor, up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, 4000 milliamp hour battery, triple camera setup including a 3x optical zoom lens, in display fingerprint reader, uh, all right, well, in-display fingerprint reader. On paper, it certainly looks like it could compete with the best smartphones to date, but we'll circle back on that. One thing that OnePlus was particularly proud of is what it's calling its fluid AMOLED display. The unique part about this display, according to OnePlus, is the fact that it's a Quad HD AMOLED panel with a 90 Hz refresh rate, all of which is really great. But while OnePlus is not the first to come up with any of those technologies, it is the first to combine them as far as I've been able to tell. Fine, but let's not pretend we invented the trampoline here, okay? Pricing for the OnePlus Pro starts at $669, which is just $80 shy of the Samsung Galaxy S10e. OnePlus is starting to sniff some unfamiliar air here. It's $120 more than the OnePlus 6T, which debuted at $549. That's a 22-ish percent increase in price. And as we've said over and over on this podcast, 10% is a big deal. So 22% is a very big deal. Is that to say the phone isn't worth it? I don't think so, but here's the thing. As Scott points out on the newsletter, this is a near flagship level product for a not flagship price, which is great. I mean, $669 is not flagship level pricing until you wait a couple of months after its debut and then the price drops and yeah, that is flagship pricing. You think you can't find a Galaxy S10e for $670 right now? But we're not here to talk about whether or not this is a great price. It is arguably a great price. But that's not what OnePlus said. And if this were The Verge or MKBHD or Mr. Mobile or anyone else, I would brush it off as fan-fueled rhetoric. But this comes straight from the horse's mouth. In fact, let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. And again, today for us is about the mission. And what is important and special about today is what you're going to see today, it's not just the best smartphone we've made, but we believe it's the best smartphone you're going to see this year. So they specifically said that this would be the best phone we see all year. Not the best value, not the best for the price, the best, period. And it's only May, and we've seen the Huawei P30 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, and the LG G8 ThinQ. So can OnePlus possibly back up its claim? I kind of doubt it, which is not to say it's a bad phone, which is not to say that you shouldn't buy it. But if you're going to claim to have the best phone of the year in May, you better to be able to back it up. And so far, you're not. So while we wait for OnePlus to backpedal on that claim, let's head on over into the roundup. <laughs> OnePlus also released a refresh of its bullet wireless Bluetooth headphones. Coming in at $99, these headphones receive high praise from our friends over at soundguys.com with great passive isolation and quick charging capabilities. But iPhone users will want to pass here since these headphones can't handle the AAC file format, which kind of seems weird. But strangely enough, this is probably the only OnePlus product launched yesterday that I would actually recommend at this point. Adobe recently started sending out emails to users using older versions of its Creative Cloud software that they need to stop using the older versions or they might get sued. Um, 
What? As far as I can tell, these are users using the Creative Suite subscription service, which allows you to upgrade for free, so this just seems weird, both that users are holding on to legacy software and that Adobe is forcing an upgrade. One Twitter user who complained about this indicated that the reason he was holding on to the older software was because Adobe changed a ton of features and the newer software wouldn't work with older projects, but then at the same time he says maybe it's time to cancel his prescription, and that logic flat out escapes me. Upgrade your software, people, for better or for worse. San Francisco has become the first U.S. city to ban the use of facial recognition technology by the police, which is nice. But the ban does not extend to airports, harbors, or the private industry, so basically the only people who can't use the tech are the ones who actually might find it useful? I mean, if it's bad, it's bad everywhere, San Francisco. Just saying. Huawei, who thankfully had fallen out of the news cycle for a while, says that it is now willing to sign no-spy agreements with governments if they agree to use their equipment. Well, that's a relief. But what about governments that haven't signed that agreement for? I mean, really, Huawei, do you really think that this is a sticking point here? Oh, they double dog promise not to spy? Oh, well, that's okay then. Huawei, you are a creepy AF company who routinely attempts corporate espionage and you think that we think a contract is going to prevent government espionage? How literally do you take that dumb American cliché, man? I mean, I'm not saying it's an incorrect cliché, far from it, but damn, dude. Google is going to start pushing more ads into its app and on its maps and within search results, and frankly, the only thing surprising about any of this is that it took this long to start. I'm going to quote Reuters here, who is quoting Oliver Heckman, Vice President of Engineering for Travel and Shopping, who said, quote, The company wants to make it easier for users to discover and buy new products because they shop in spurts while watching TV or sitting in the bathroom. Yeah, you could tell this guy is an engineer because he just referenced sitting in the bathroom while using the word spurts. That guy did not have a PR rep with him when he said that. And finally, if you were looking for a reason to hate AT&T, well, another reason anyway, here you go. The telecom giant lobbied hard for a tax cut that gained AT&T about a billion with a B dollars in extra revenue in 2017. As part of its lobbying effort, AT&T promised 7,000 new jobs. Since getting the tax break, AT&T has actually cut over three times that many jobs, around 23,000 in that same time frame. If you are wondering where the phrase, the rich get rich, richer comes from, well, let's just say it may have originally been written on AT&T letterhead. So that is going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter at Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Plus, this is my semi-regular request that you go out and review a podcast. It doesn't have to be my podcast. Just go out and leave a review on a podcast because it helps the podcasting community. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Tomorrow.